Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to welcome you to the third Colomine Symposium for Asia Day 1. My name is Priska and I will be your host today. Glomine for Asia is the third of a series of symposia to help establish a global microbiome network. The current symposium is held by scientists across the fields of microbiology, molecular biology, bioinformatics, anthropology, conservation, preservation, ethics, and public health. Through this symposium, we will discuss and promote the importance of conservation efforts on the threatened microbial diversity. Today's symposium consists of three talking sessions with general discussion time at the end of each session. The Glomine for Asia is hosted by the Mokhtaria Institute for Nanotechnology in Indonesia and organized by a committee which includes institutions from Asia and America. This is an initiative under the mission of Microbiota Fold to conserve long-term health for humanity. Before we start with the first session, we are honored to have with us Dr. Safarina Malik from the Mohtaria Institute for Nanotechnology in Indonesia and Professor Maria Gloria dominguez Bella from the Microbiota Fold and Rutgers University USA, who will deliver the welcoming words. Please welcome Dr. Safarina Malik and Professor Maria Gloria dominguez Bella. Thank you, Priska. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, honorable Vice Minister of Health of Republic Indonesia, Professor Dante Saxon Harbono, my long-term friend, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, Om Swastiastu, Salam Kebajikan, good morning and good evening wherever you are. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to the third Global Microbiome Network, Glomine Virtual Symposium for Asia, which is part of the Microbiota Vault activities. Professor Domingos Bello, Gloria, the president of the Microbiota Vault, will explain briefly about the Microbiota Vault later. Hopefully she is already logged in by that time. Global microbial diversity is alarmingly decreased, mostly due to industrialization and urbanization, including changes in lifestyle, extensive use of antibiotics, and land use conversion. Microbial diversity is crucial for human health, and loss of microbial diversity has been linked to the increasing prevalence of immune and metabolic disease. A major challenge is to prevent and preferably reverse this worldwide trend, for which these microbes are at risk of extinction will be needed later. Microbial diversity hotspots are mostly located in places with traditional people, such as in the remote areas of the vast Indonesian archipelago, and will be lost as they integrate into industrial societies. Unless we recognize the urgency to preserve it and foster research to understand the functions of the diversity at risk of being lost. If we preserve specimens holding this biodiversity, we will be able to restore in the future once research and technologies allow us to do so. The third Glomine Symposium for Asia will discuss about microbiome research in Asia and promote the importance of conservation efforts on microbial biodiversity. We have more than 300 participants from various countries that have already registered. I hope this symposium will stimulate an active microbial research networking among Asian countries and beyond. And welcome again, and I wish you a wonderful and fruitful meeting and discussion. Enjoy, and I particularly would like to uh, thank um, Professor Dante uh, that he has spared his time to give his uh, well, uh, opening speech. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give back to the MC, Priska. Is Gloria here already? She's not here yet. Okay, we just continue with uh, Prof. Dante. Thank you very much, Dr. Safarina Malik, for your welcoming words. We also feel honored to have with us Professor Dante Saxono Harbuono, the Vice Minister of Health Republic of Indonesia, who will deliver the opening remarks. Please welcome Professor Dante Saxono Harbuono. Can you hear my voice? Very clearly, Prof. Dante, thank you. Okay. Good morning, honorable speaker, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Safarina Malik and others. A significant breakthrough in microbiome research occurred during 
the 1940s and 1950s when microorganisms could be cultured in the laboratory. Since then, advance in genome sequencing technology and metagenomic uh, analysis have enabled scientists to study these microbes, my, microbes and their function and to research microbiome host interaction both in health and disease. It turned out that the human microbiome has numerous functions for human health, including the development of immunity, defense against pathogen, host nutrition, synthesis of vitamin and fat storage, as well as an influence of human behaviors making in an essential organ of the body without which we could not function properly. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, microbial diversity loss in the world population has accelerated over the past century due to the various practices like uh, rapid urbanization, overuse of antibiotics and other medication, bird infant feeding practice, increasing hygiene practice, homes and workplace, decreased diversity in global diet, declining intake of dietary fiber and increasing consumption of processed food and widespread use of tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. Consequently, as a result of this practice, microbial diversity, which is essential for human health and has become globally threatened, which is strongly associated with the skyrocketing of immune and metabolic dysfunction, leading of the disease such as asthma, allergy, type 1 diabetes, and celiac disease. More and more people are got chronic disease. More health care expense increase as result of continuous treatment and hospitalization, resulting less and less quality of life of our population in our nation. We must prevent this from happening and make change at that last. Ladies and gentlemen, unless there is a recognition of need to preserve microbial diversity and encourage study to comprehend the function of diversity, it is being lost. The reduction of chance of reversing of the global trend of rising chronic disease. In the spring of threatening all global health architecture, we must start to refocus, refocus our attention and effort on taking microbiome diversity distinction through the following element. First, preservation of microbiomes. Microbiomes are conferred by collecting them from their most likely source of traditional culture and environment with minimal antibiotic use and other modern procedures. Local institutions need to be involved in collecting and preserving. And the second one is microbiome restoration. By developing well-defined, precise, and individual approach of restoring depleted microbiome in specific populations, which can help to treat certain disease. Restoration is also possible as prevention strategy by adding key organis organisms to the diet depletion, but still presents a microbiome population. Ladies and gentlemen, microbiome diversity exists exist might be silent, but its happening can produce catastrophic disease consequence in no action is taken. The effort of microbiome research and conservation cannot be sole responsibility of medical professional and scientists only. General population and other international and national stakeholders have a crucial role before it's become a public health concern in the future. It is necessary to implement policy, laws, and constant committed to ensure effort maintaining the diversity microbiota existence. I truly appreciate the Glomine for Asia hosted by the Mohtaria D Institute for Nanotechnology featuring talks from the field of microbiology, molecular biology, bioinformatics, anthropology, conservation, preservation, 
ethic and public health emphasize the important conservation effort on microbial diversity. This is noble effort preserving the long-term health of humanity together because only by working together will be the chance we all want to see. With this, the third global microbial network domain symposium for Asia is officially open. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Prof. Dante, for your kind uh, opening remarks. Before you leave, I would like also to introduce uh, Gloria, Professor Dominguez Bello. She's here already. Because of the time differences, it it, 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 it's a little bit tricky to match everything. Gloria, please give your, uh, I'm, I'm int introducing you to Professor Dante, our Vice Minister of Health, and you can uh, tell him a little bit about uh, the microbiota vault. Thank you. You are still muted. You are still muted. Your microphone is not, okay. Uh, now, I think I'm not on now. Thank you, Safarina. And, um... Dear Vice Minister and dear scientists, everybody who's here, good morning, good evening. Apologies, I, I had it wrong in my calendar, um, but I'm here. I want to welcome everybody um, to this uh, third Glomine in, in the third uh, continent. We started in Peru, with Peru two years ago, uh, mostly for the Western Hemisphere and all of, a lot of South America. Then. We continue with Africa last year, and now we are in Indonesia. And um, I want to welcome everybody. I believe that my uh, history of the microbiome is coming right now or later, Safarina? Is it coming later, right I away? Think, uh, the history, later. Later, okay. Yeah. So I just want to... Uh, open uh, this event following the remarks of the Vice Minister with, who honors us with uh, your presence. Uh, this is an important effort uh, in which we want everybody globally to give their contribution and promote education on the microbiome, promote creation of uh, local collections that will preserve life complex microbiota for us to research and to be able to restore in the future. So thank you and welcome everybody. I hope this will be very productive uh, time. And I want to give a special thanks for, to Safarina for an incredible organization of, of this meeting. She really holded most of the weight in her, in her back and did it great, gracefully. So thank you, Safarina. It's great to have uh, partners like you in the microbiota vault. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Gloria. And thank you, Prof. Dante. Prof. Dante is my long time, long term good friends. We, we were way, way back since, what, since we were very young. <laughs> so thank you again, uh, Prof. Dante, for your kind speech. And let us begin uh, with the session. Priska, I will give it back to you, uh, your MC, to start the session. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you very much, Dr. Safarina, Professor Maria Gloria Dominguez-Bella and Professor Dante for giving the opening remarks. 